If you haven't got an Xbox 360, don't worry, you can still play all these fantastic games with the Xenia emulator. Let me show you how. Hi and welcome to Bites and Bits. If you've been following some of my recent videos, you'll know that I've been doing quite a bit of work on an Xbox 360 console, where we've used the RGH3 mod to hack this, which allows us then to play really, really any game we want from various backup files. And we've also then had a look at running original Xbox games on it and, and then turning it into an emulator. So this is a great console to have mess around with to turn into a real retro gaming system. But obviously, if you're looking to play some Xbox 360 games, then, then having to buy one of these and mod it and so on is, is a, a bit of an outlay cost-wise and also time-wise. So you might not want to go to that bother if, if you just want to have a bit of a play around with some of the great Xbox 360 games out there. So there is another option, and that of course is to use emulation. So there is a really good project called Xenia, which is an Xbox 360 emulator. Um, and that's what we're going to be having a look at in this video. So we're going to look at how we can get hold of the of the um, emulator, how we can then set it up, how we can get hold of some games, and then how we can have some really good fun playing some Xbox 360 games directly on our PC. So to download Xenia, you simply need to go across to the xenia.jp website. And you'll come to this page here. So this talks you through a bit about the project and so on. Uh, to get it downloaded then, we do have a download page here, which will take you straight to the master download. But I would advise you to have a look through the quick start guide, which you'll find over here. And this really takes you through the uh, recommended settings and, and system requirements to, to be able to run it. So again, you, you will need to have installed your Microsoft Visual C++ um, distributable in there. Uh, so that needs to be, if you haven't got that installed already, just click on the link and download and install that. And again, it'll take you through some various other ideas. Um, they do recommend that you update your GPU drivers just to give you the best performance. Now, there are two versions of Xenia. So the master copy then is the current um, release version, if you want to call it that. Um, so again, it is just an in-development project anyway, but the master one tends to be more stable. The Canary one then is in them trying out some new bits and pieces to try and get more games working. Uh, but you can download either, uh, and uh, depending on what you want to do. After that then, it does take you through how to get hold of games. Uh, so you can rip them directly from your Xbox 360 discs. Um, and again, I, I covered a bit of that in my RGH3 um, videos, uh, so go through there. But I'm assuming most of us will be, let's say, ob obtaining our backup copies elsewhere. And those will either be as ISO disk rips, um, or you may be downloading them as these GOD, these, these game on demand packages. Either of those will work in um, Xenia. So let's come up here. Um, I'm just simply going to, I've, I've already installed Microsoft Visual C++. Um, so I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to come and I'm going to download. So from download Xenia, I'm just going to download the master copy. So that will come down as Xenia master.zip. And we'll just save that onto a, a place on my hard drive. If I then go and have a look at that, so we have our, our archive downloaded here. All we need to do is simply extract that file out. So I'm just going to extract it here. And that will create a number of files. So I can get rid of the actual zip file itself. And once I've got that installed, um, all I need to do is to start up Xenia. And we're now ready to play some Xbox 360 games. So again, the, the interface itself is, is fairly straightforward. We just have a menu across the top, which allows us to go and open up um, a file. Um, we can then do a bit of setting up of our CPU and GPU um, and our display settings. And that's really it. So, so let's have a look at getting hold of some games and then getting those up and running. To get hold of game backup files, um, you're going to have to sort that out for yourself. Um, so again, I because of YouTube, I'm not able to give you direct links to where to go. But again, it's not that hard. Have a look out on the internet. 
have a search around uh, and you'll very quickly find places where you can get hold of these files. Now do make sure that if you are going to be downloading any software that you do make sure that you check out my video on copyright for retro gaming uh, just to make sure that you stay on the right side of the copyright laws in your area. Now when you do download your files you will either get them into um, an ISO format so these are the raw um, DVD dumps or sometimes you will get them in what's known as God format which are these package files. So in fact this um, these files here are the actual DVDs but repackaged up in this sort of format um, and again the the files which you would then run so you can see here that each of these each one of these individual folders is one game so inside that game folder it then comes down until eventually you get to one of these sorts of files and that is the file that Xenia will be able to run uh, from the ISOs it will just pick up on the actual ISO file itself so there are a range of formats that you can use then to get hold of your games. Uh, so do please have a look around and download a few of those. So I'm going to go through a couple of these games here and we'll just see um, what level of emulation and accuracy we can actually get from this, um, this emulator. So we've booted up Xenia again. And let's go to our file menu and we'll open up a game ISO file. So I'm going to try this F1 2013. And as you can see, that will come up then, and, and we're now able to play our game. So I've, I've obviously got an Xbox controller plugged into my computer, along with my mouse and keyboard, so I still have access then to the file menus and so on. So let's just get this game um, just to a sort of stable state. Okay, so we're at a sort of fairly static page here, and we can start to have a look at the options for us. So on the CPU side, um, there are a certain number of things we can turn on and off here and play about with. Um, to be honest, I'm not entirely certain what these things do, but again, it's, it's there for you to have a bit of a mess about with. Uh, the GPU, again, I think a lot of these is more sort of seeing what's happening rather than um, controlling it. And then on the display, really we can go to full screen, um, but we do have a little bit of post-processing settings that we can mess about with. So we can add some anti-aliasing into the system. So again, um, if you look at the text in this area here, as I add more anti-aliasing in, you can see that the edges just start to blur a bit more. Uh, so again, that's something for you to have a bit of a play about with. The resampling and sharpening then, again, as, as I add some of that in, you can see that it does, it does just sort of sharpen up the look of the text. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm quite happy with just the default settings where neither of these are turned on. And we do seem to get um, what, what seems fairly original to, to, the, to the actual Xbox itself if you were running this through a monitor. So I'm just going to leave mine sat at there. I'm then going to jump into full screen display so we can actually just get a bit of a better view of this. And there we are now running, and in effect we now have our PC turned into an Xbox console. And again, we, we can simply come in here and we, we can start going through and playing the game as normal. Now one of the things which I found with this is when we start to um, use the on-screen keyboard, so usually on an Xbox, it would bring up a, a little on-screen keyboard that you would then use with your controller. Um, Xenia then replaces that with just simply a, a type-in um, box here. So again, we're just using our keyboard and mouse as usual and, and just entering our, our information that way. And so on. Um, so again, uh, these, this particular um, box here, again, I'm using my D-pad and then my A button to select. And then we're going to come across and find somewhere to do that and setting it up. And again, we're now just going through the main setup of this game. So once we get to the actual game itself, you can see that we are getting pretty much um, full speed emulation here. So everything seems to be working correctly. Um, I, I did find that there are a few graphical glitches that you will find coming through this um, system. So, so sometimes you will find little areas and especially sort of some icons that are popping up and um, will not quite work correctly. So let, let's just see if we can find um, any of those in the system. So again, you can see some of the textures there are, are not quite right. 
Um, the video coming up is is all fine. Um, but again, uh, I do find that sometimes those will just do a little bit of messing up uh, and you'll suddenly get some sort of interference on that, it looks like. Um, so again, um, the, it's, it's not ideal emulation, but again, it is it is pretty good. But the actual gameplay itself, and as you can see, um, there's there's no issues with the gameplay. Um, the frame rate and so on. Again, on, on my PC, I'm running an i a Core i7 processor here with a um, 16 a GTX 1650 um, graphics card. So it's not high end stuff. But you can see that we are getting um, some some emulation. Again, as you can see there we go. Some of the icons on this particular um, screen. Then you can see. Are, are, are just glitching out and, and not coming up correctly. But to be honest, th that, that's probably about as bad as it gets. Um, at, at least in this particular game, and, and most of the games I've tried out are like that. There are a couple which do work a, a little bit worse. So let's, let's try one of those next. So this game is Skate 3. And I find this one to be particularly bad for sort of video glitches and sound glitches, but also sort of bad response from the controller as well. Uh, perhaps that is just me playing the game, um, but it does seem to sort of um, ignore some button presses and just get confused as to what's going on. So as you can see here, um, if, if, I, if I be quiet for a second... The first thing you need to learn is how to get around on your skateboard. Skateboard. Let's see if you can handle it. You can see that the sound itself is a bit broken up. Sometimes it seems to repeat itself. And at this point here, um, you can see that um, it's, it's really not me being this bad at playing the game. Um, it really is just ignoring some of my button presses, and I'm, I'm really just struggling to actually get the player to do anything at all. But um, but yeah. As I said, this is a particularly bad game. Most of them seem to work perfectly well, with a couple of glitches here and there, but nothing that's really going to spoil your enjoyment of, of that title. So that pretty much is the Xenia or, or Xenia emulator for the PC. Um, as the developer said, this was developed totally as a spare time project, uh, which seems a pretty amazing feat to me. Um, but again, um, it's a pretty good emulator. It gives you very good Xbox 360 emulation. There are a few glitches here and there, but um, as I say, nothing that will stop you from enjoying some great titles on this console. So do download that, have a go and just enjoy yourself. So hopefully you found this video useful, um, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, don't forget to check out my other videos for more gaming, modding, um, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.